welcome to Rio Plus Social. We are so happy to have you here today, everywhere in this room in Rio de Janeiro, watching across the world via live stream on YouTube. To everyone, to all of our friends, we'd like to say welcome to the most important conversation happening in the world today. My name is Aaron Sherinian. I'm with the United Nations Foundation. And on behalf of our partners, a group of extraordinary people and organizations that believe that today in a connected world, in a world where technology can be used for good, in a place where global problems can only be solved when we work together, and in a day in a city where everyone is talking about the future we want, together with the United Nations and world leaders, this is your seat at the summit. This is your time to have your voice heard with Rio Plus Social. You know, today is going to be a different kind of event because it's a different kind of conversation. And I want to make sure that you know what to expect as we go through today's interesting conversations because you're a part of that conversation. It's going to be fast. There's going to be changes. We want you to, to remember to be part of a conversation that's happening via social media all over the world. We want you to ask the questions. We're listening to you. And so are the speakers. So are the leaders of the UN and from throughout the world that are meeting for Rio Plus 20 here today. So please use the hash Rio Plus Social hashtag on Twitter. Please update and post on your Facebook pages things that you're learning about. Please put on your blogs those questions and things that you want to hear about and pin what you are finding interesting. We're listening to you and we'll make sure that your voice is part of that conversation. Today you're not going to hear a lot of introductions because you have the information online on realplussocial.com. You have the information in your bloggers packet. So we're going to make sure we start the conversations early and we'll get right down to the, to the real business of how social media is at the heart of helping make sure that we solve the world's uh, biggest problems and create a better world. But you're going to see two guys. And they're these two guys right here that we're going to uh, introduce to you right now. You're going to see Lucas Mello and Rodrigo Cunha, Rodrigo Cunha from Live. You're going to see these two faces. They're going to be coming up and introducing our speakers, our conversations, and our panels as they come in. So thanks, guys, for being here today. And speaking of Lucas and Rodrigo, they are part of a dynamic group of partners that I want to make sure and shout out to today. It's only thanks to our partners that we're able to stand here in Rio de Janeiro today in support of the UN's conversation with global leaders about global issues, sustainability, and a better future. I'd like to thank, uh, in particular, Ericsson, who has made all of this possible today, an organization that understands how technology can be used for good. And in our world today, as a networked society, technology for good is the conversation starter. Is Hans Vestberg here right now? I understood he might be here with us today. And do I have friends from Ericsson who are here today? I want to say, Hans, say hi to everybody. Hans is here. We're going to hear from Hans later on today. Thank you, Ericsson, for being a leader. And our friends from EDP, a leader in sustainable energy. Do we have friends here from EDP already? I want to make sure that you know who they are. Can we please give a round of applause to our dynamic sponsors who have made this possible today? Thanks to all of you. Now, of course, you know that the partners who bring you the Social Good Summit and here in Real Real Plus 20, we, uh, we're proud of the fact that the conversation just got started. And I want to make sure that you all have a chance to meet uh, our dear friend, Pete Cashmore of Mashable. Pete, are you around in this room right now? Have we got you here, Pete? Pete's in the back. And what I'd like everyone to do right now is I want you all to like Pete Cashmore. You know how you do that? We're all going to actually give him a thumb. So if you can all do me a favor and like Pete Cashmore for you. I like you, Pete. We're liking Pete Cashmore. We go, thank you, Pete. Thank you to Mashable. And to the 92nd Street Y, you're going to hear from, as we start the conversation, our partner, Henry Timms. As a reminder, we are all part of that story because we're talking about sustainability. Abril, the Abril Group, and the Planeta Sustentable, we want to make sure and thank our friends who are driving this conversation here in this country that is hyper-vocal and hyper-social and that is leading the world in sustainability issues. Virgin Unite, who will be here later on as well. All of these friends are people we want you to follow, ask questions to. Now, it is my pleasure to get the conversation started. We're going to have a dynamic start to our morning, led by our, uh, our friend and partner, Henry Timms of the 92nd Street Y, who's going to start us off today. Let's give him a hand and welcome them. Henry. We're ready for it, ready for it. Thank you, everybody. 
Good morning and welcome to Rio Plus Cell Show. It's a real pleasure to be here this morning. So we thought we'd start the day by getting right into it. We've got with us two real leaders in the sustainability space, both of whom run global organizations. Both those organizations are all about Rio, are all about sustainability, but are also all about some of the big challenges we're facing. So in the next 20 minutes, with Georg Kell and with Kumi Naidu, we're going to answer a big question, which is really, what is this all about? So let's get straight into it. Here's my first question. There's 130 heads of states here in Rio right now. There's 50,000 people. What are we all doing here? Kumi. Well, what we are supposed to be doing here is securing the future of our children and grandchildren, if you want to put it in very simple terms. That this planet was recognized 20 years ago has certain limitations in terms of what we take from it and how we ensure that we sustain it for future generations. So this summit is about, was supposed to be about, protecting our oceans, protecting our forests, ensuring that people, the 1.6 billion people in the world who do not have access to a single light bulb, have energy access, but to have it in a clean, green way. It's about rethinking the model of development that we've had historically that has drove us to this point of climate catastrophe and destruction and to ask ourselves, how do we have a new green inclusive economy that can help people out of poverty to live decent prosperous lives, but to do it in a way that also does not harm the environment and does it in a sustainable way for future generations. So I think there's a so, lot Sorry, of I should say though, that's what we were supposed to do. But if I want to be brutally honest, and I feel that's my job to do that. Very good. Is that what is happening there, the negotiations went on till about 2, 3 in the morning last night. The text on the table is a pathetic disgrace. It's a betrayal of what this is supposed to be about. And if anything, soon we will be calling this conference if the heads of state do not reverse what's on the table, not Rio plus 20, but Rio minus 20, because it's taking us more than 20 years back. Thank you. I think that qualifies as brutal honesty. So, Georg, give us your spin on this. Why are we here, and is, are we being brutally honest about this? Is that really where we are right now? I think Kumi got it right. We are here to look for new pathways that are sustainable. Uh, one billion people without food, going hungry every night. One billion people lacking access to water, clean water, clean energy. At the same time, the planet is set on the wrong direction, global warming. It's a reality. It's, we're building a huge problem for the future. Governments know it. They're trying to negotiate their way into the future. This is tough. It is not easy. More than 190 governments with different perspectives. But what's also going on here in Rio, and this is why the social summit is so important, because sustainable development is everybody's business. So I believe that Rio is also, and probably foremost, about changing mindsets on a very large scale. Consumers, young people, business, and other actors, academia, because we need to change. We need to find new ways of what we produce, how we produce, and how we find ways to include those which are excluded. So I would say, Rio Plus 20 has at least two tracks, if not three. It has the government tracks, it has the non-government track, and within the non-government track, there are basically all stakeholders of society. And that's why I think Rio Plus 20 goes beyond governments. Are we pleased? The Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said, negotiations are painfully slow. And that's a diplomatic word of saying, much more should be done, absolutely. What can we do? I think we have to encourage governments to do more. We have to rebuild bottom up the imperative of making change faster and for scaling up. And I think all of us as consumers, as citizens, as business people, as entrepreneurs, as think tanks, we all have a role to play in that. So that's the, the big picture and it's a pretty depressing big picture. So tell me about your organizations. W what are you doing here in Rio and what does success look like for your organizations? Well, I'm running a business civil society organizations. It's called Global Compact. 
10 principles, universal principles, human rights, workplace, the environment, and good governance, anti-corruption, very important. Many of the malaise in the world, by the way, I believe, have to do with the abuse of power, which skews incentives and holds back the inclusion of people. Uh, we have 7,000 companies and 2,000 civil society organizations organized in country networks around the world. And we had a three-day event here in this very same hotel, just which concluded yesterday, where we basically tried to build bottom-up solutions on water management, on low-carbon technology, on social entrepreneurship, on human rights, supply chain, and many other issues. And we tried to build the business case for sustainability. The good news is a growing number of companies is getting more serious, but the bad news is the great majority is still sitting on a fence and is reluctant to invest into corporate sustainability. 